Would everyone please stand for the national anthem? Would everyone please be seated? Um, also, out of respect for this momentous occasion, please take the time to silence your cell phones if you would. It's my privilege as the board chair at the Keck Graduate Institute to welcome all of you here today, graduates, family, friends, guests. Um, I would now, we would now like to um, have Father Joe Fenton from the Claremont University Consortium Office of the Chaplains deliver the invocation. Good morning. Today is a, an occasion for great celebration. As we honor our graduates, we give thanks for their talents, their scholarship, and their vision for the future. Woodrow Wilson, long before he was President of the United States, Governor of the State of New Jersey, or President of Princeton, liked to remind his students that the purpose of higher education is not to make money but to leave the world better than you found it by your contributions for its future. We seek the Almighty's blessings upon our graduates this morning for their successful and happy life. May the wisdom of President Wilson underscore their lives as they pursue their careers and so enrich our lives. And may God bless them on this great day. Thank you, Father Fenton. I would ask that all the graduates please stand. For those of you who may not be familiar, we have a custom here at KGI where those who are graduating thank all of the parents, friends, family, and acquaintances that have helped them through their programs here at KGI. So would the graduates please turn to your family and friends and give them a round of applause. Okay, please be seated. I would now like to call President Schuster to the podium. Thank you, Chairman Curry. Welcome to the class of 2013. Are you there? <laughs> it is my great pleasure to welcome today's graduates of Keck Graduate Institute, the class of 2013. KGI's 12th graduating class, the new alumni who are initiating KGI's 16th anniversary year. I also extend a special welcome to family, friends, and guests who come together to help celebrate this commencement. 
We are honored to be joined by members of KGI's Board of Trustees, Advisory Council, faculty, alumni, and staff. On behalf of the KGI community, I welcome all of you to KGI's campus. It is now my pleasure to introduce and begin the ceremony by introducing the 2013 class speaker. The speaker this year is Ujval Kondrakunta. Ujval graduated from the University of California, Berkeley in 2008. Uh, he received a bachelor's degree in molecular and cell biology and came to KGI to study the business of bioscience. Last summer, he interned at Amgen and specialized in operations and cost-benefit analysis. As a Team Masters Project member, he performed rare disease public policy assessment for Amicus Therapeutics. In the fall, Ujval will join the San Francisco office of Deloitte Consulting as a consultant. It is my pleasure to welcome Ujval Kondraguta. Introduction, Shelley. Esteemed faculty, distinguished guests, and fellow classmates, let me start off by saying what an honor it is to be speaking on the behalf of the graduating class of 2013. To the family members and loved ones, whether you're joining us from half a world away or just from down the road, I'd like to add my thanks on behalf of the class for being here today to share in this occasion as we move on from one stage of our lives to the next. And to my classmates, Whatever your next step is, I ask you to reflect at this time on all that we've learned and all that we've accomplished in our time here. It is said that graduation is an event where a commencement speaker comes up on stage here and tells people dressed in identical caps and gowns that individuality is the key to success. <laughs> so while there's no doubt that each of us is unique, I won't spend time belaboring the point. Instead, for each of us, no matter what program we've come through, there are certain qualities that we all have in common, some that we've come into the school with and some that we're taking out. First, we all came to this school with a shared commitment toward bettering the health and lives of people. We all know about the issues and obstacles that are tossed around in lectures and conversations around campus daily. Healthcare reform, personalized medicine, patent cliffs, and pharmaceutical R&D slowdown. These are major challenges, but frankly, it's a very exciting time for us to be meeting these challenges head on. Some of us will face these challenges with a scalpel and medical chart, the PPCs. Others with spreadsheets and PowerPoint presentations. And still others with incredibly complicated statistics software packages and arcane sounding engineering equipment such as woofy systems and tangential flow filters. Incidentally, this last group was the one that usually went to for math homework in our time here. No matter what tools we'll use in the future, KGI has provided us a common set of tools. These include the ability to size a market and the basics of medical device regulation, how to navigate the intricacies of regulatory approval, and how to juggle half a dozen projects at once, and most of all, how to effectively blend the life sciences with business to create a meaningful impact in human health. No matter what specialized tools each of you will use in your path down the road, this is the common set of tools that this institution has provided for us. Of all these tools, perhaps the most important and one that's most stressed to all of us is teamwork, the ability to work in groups. Like many of you, I went to a state school with a large undergrad population, and the extent of the teamwork that I had at any, if in those days, was choosing uh, as a team which one or two people would essentially do all the work. <laughs> Here at KGI, however, from ITP to TMP, we have, where we have almost as many team projects as we have acronyms, we struggled as a team and shared in the triumphs and achievements as a team. I know that I personally would not have accomplished all I did were not for all the members that, were, that shared teams with me that I see sitting in front of me today. Malcolm Gladwell famously wrote that you need to devote 10,000 hours to any activity to become an expert in it. 
Judging from the number of teams I've seen in their TMP rooms every Friday night, I'm pretty sure we've all made a significant dent in that 10,000 hour limit. Yeah. <laughs> I've come to believe that it's an environment like KGI where teamwork thrives, where it's actually practiced to add value, not where, not where it's merely talked about, where you have people with a variety of backgrounds and goals that each bring their own expertise toward a common goal. And that's why I believe that it's one of the most common, uh, most valuable tools that we've been able to take out of this institution. And the last quality, one of the most important, I think, is that we're risk takers. We had to be to take a chance, deciding to come to an up and coming institution in the economic climate that we did, long before we had an idea of what ROI was, something Professor Banks had quickly rectified. <laughs> Some of us took a risk coming to a new country, leaving familiarity behind and embracing a new culture as a new way of doing things. We all took a risk every time we went up to a CEO of a company at an ISS BSS event and tried our best to network without being quite sure if we were doing it right. If you think back to it, it wasn't that long ago that we stepped onto campus for orientation, unsure of what to expect, whether we'd be able to handle graduate school, whether it was going to be worth that huge risk. Well, I think by being here today, by persevering through all the finals, all the projects, and sitting here, we've shown that it was worth it and we were able to handle graduate school. And while though we were kind of concerned about whether we get any sleep or not, especially the Proteus TMP team, <laughs> uh, I'm sure that there's a few sleep studies out there that would love to have a few KGI students be recruited. <laughs> or maybe a certain unnamed coffee company would love to start a TMP. <laughs> to conclude, in our time at KGI, we've dealt with constantly evolving classes, projects with innumerable twists and turns, and an institution where one of the only constants is change. And I hope you feel all the way that I do, that we wouldn't have it any other way. We've more, we're more prepared as a result to deal with uncertainties of the world and more ready to hit the ground running as a result of those changes. I believe each of us has come with, uh, become comfortable with ambiguity and realize that it's OK to not know the answers because KGI has taught us how to ask those right questions. Ultimately, I guess the best way to recognize how KGI has prepared us, though, is to look and look out to what we will all accomplish in the future. And to that, I look forward to hearing from each of you on that. Congratulations, class of 2013. Thank you, Uzval. It is now my honor to present the class president for the class of 2013. Uh, Andrew Vo. Drew received a Bachelor of Science in Bioengineering and Biotechnology from the University of California, San Diego in 2010. He performed research at Biogen IDIC for a year before coming to KGI to study the business of bioprocessing, I mean, the business of bioscience and bioprocessing. Last summer, he interned at Amgen in their operations risk management group, and this past year completed his T master's project with US Script. This summer, Drew will join Baxter Healthcare as an associate in their operations development program. It is a great pleasure to welcome Drew Vo. That's not fair. <laughs> All right, thank you, Shelley. <laughs> All right, good afternoon, or good morning, everyone, really early today. Um, all right, to begin, in preparation for our careers, leadership has definitely been a great emphasis at KGI. And around one year ago, I was given the unique opportunity to lead the students of this institution, and it was quite a journey. So to the KGI students, I'd like to begin by thanking all of you for allowing me this opportunity to serve as your 2012-2013 student body president. Thank you for your support, and I hope I've done the position justice. And looking to the future, I'm confident in handing the reins over to the next student body president-elect, uh, Nadine Panayak, who's standing in the back there. <laughs> Woo! I know it'll be great seeing the great achievements that you will achieve in your presidency next year. But now, as a leader, a leader is only as good as its team. And I was very fortunate this year, very lucky to have such a stellar team, a stellar cabinet full of 
um, passionate individuals. So to my fellow members of student government, we began this year with goals of enhancing communication, professionalism, and the KGI personal branding of student body. And before you today, it's with conviction and pride that I can say that we've achieved these goals. <laughs> so to you all, thank you for your dedication and hard work. And I will truly miss the times that we had together. And one last note on leadership. Though it may reap many rewards, it requires a lot of sacrifice. And that was no different for student government. With the infamous KGI workload, it takes altruism and self-motivation to pursue a leadership role here. So I would like to extend my gratitude and recognize the many other student leaders here today. KGI has a plethora of professional and social student organizations, and their number and caliber of these organizations have skyrocketed in the years to come because of these students. So today, I would like this opportunity to recognize you and say thank you. Thank you for stepping up and making KGI what it is today. And to all the returning students next year, I'm excited to see who steps up next and who will take KGI to the next level. So I know you will make us proud. Thank you. Um, and now I would like to introduce the class gift chair, Krishma. So Krishma graduated from the University of Maryland College Park with a Bachelor's of Cell Biology and Molecular Genetics in 2009. She then worked at NYU Medical Center in a neuroscience lab for two years before coming to KGI. During her time year here, Krishma completed a, her summer internship at Amgen in the Clinical Operations Department and completed her team master's project with the City of Hope to analyze the cost effectiveness of personalized therapies in oncology. In September, she will join the New York office of LEK Consulting and now please join me in welcoming Krishma to the stage. Thank you, Drew. An investment in knowledge always pays the best interest. These words by Ben Franklin were chosen to represent the class of 2013, and they have never been more true than today. This past year, I had the honor of serving as a class gift chair, and it was an incredible experience that taught me a whole lot about myself. The class of 2013, as a lot of us know, decided to present KGI with the Institutional Values Plaque, as Drew has, as Drew is holding up here. The goal of this plaque is to really ensure that the KGI values are ingrained in the daily lives of students, alumni, and visitors alike. I want to thank and congratulate the class and my fellow graduates. I am so proud of us for getting through this academic boot camp called KGI. <laughs> um, after the ceremony, I would like to invite everybody to go look at the class gift. It is located in the 517 building right at the entrance. Thank you and congratulations. Karishma and the class, thank you very much for your thoughtful uh, and important gift. It will be uh, looked at prominently in a, in a prominent place and remembered. It's important to remember your core values uh, all the time, especially uh, as we go through the, the growth and development that we all know is happening here at KGI. So thank you all again, and thank you for your generosity. Dr. Sterling, where are you? It's us. We are pleased to announce a new teaching award for faculty at KGI. Through a generous gift from KGI's founding president, a faculty member demonstrating excellence and innovation in teaching will receive this recognition with an award of $5,000. The inaugural Henry E. Riggs Faculty Award for Excellence in Teaching is this year presented to Angelica Nims. <laughs> B. 
beer for everybody? Is that the fun? Yeah. <laughs> Angelica, this is in recognition of your commitment to excellence through innovation of active learning methods in teaching. Over the years, Dr. Nims has developed her introductory course on medical diagnostics into an outstanding example of educational excellence. The course reflects KGI's long-standing commitment to integrating technical content with applied industrially oriented knowledge. Through an intensive semester long project, the course emphasizes teamwork and project management. Of particular importance is Dr. Nim's strong commitment to educational innovation. She has pioneered the use of flipping the classroom <clears throat> work on transportation next time. Uh, she has, she has pioneered the use of flipping the classroom teaching pedagogies within the course. This approach to active learning moves passive lectures out of the course through creating short YouTube-like concept videos linked to homework assignments <laughs> and online assessment quizzes that are completed before class. A portion of class time is then spent working through applied problem sets and more in-depth concepts. Dr. Nims is an outstanding teacher, and we are honored to award her the inaugural Henry E. Riggs Award for Teaching Excellence. See, I guess we can keep a secret. No, pretty good. Who knew? <laughs> It is now my pleasure and honor to welcome our very special commencement speaker. Let me start by saying that Frida Lewis Hall is somewhat of a legend. Just read her bio in the commencement program and you'll quickly see why. Frida Lewis Hall is the Chief Medical Officer of Pfizer Incorporated. She trained as a psychiatrist. She has held leadership roles in academia, medical research, frontline patient care, and at global biopharmaceutical companies, including Vertex, Bristol Myers Squibb, and Eli Lilly. Prior to her work in industry, she led research projects for the National Institutes of Health and was vice chairperson of the Department of Psychiatry at Howard University College of Medicine. In 2010, Dr. Lewis Hall was appointed by the President of the United States to the inaugural Board of Governors for the Patient Center Outcomes Research Institute. And in 2012, she was appointed chair of the Cures Acceleration Network Review Board and a member of the National Center for Advancing Translational Sciences Advisory Council of the National Institutes of Health. She also serves on the Executive Committee of the Clinical Trials Transformation Initiative and on numerous other boards, including those of Harvard Medical School, the Institute of Medicine's Forum on Drug Discovery and in Translation and Development, and Save the Children. Dr. Lewis Hall has been named as one of Savoy's top influential women in corporate America in 2012, and she was selected as the Healthcare Businesswoman's Associate in 2011 Woman of the Year. A passionate advocate for empowering patients through health information, Dr. Lewis Hall speaks frequently in venues from TEDMED to the Essence Music Festival and appears regularly on the Emmy-winning plate daytime syndicated show, The Doctors. I now present the distinguished speaker of Keck Graduate Institute's 12th commence commencement, Dr. Frida Lewis Hall. Thank you so much. I think after listening to uh, that introduction, I'm feeling especially old and tired. <laughs> thank you so much for such a warm um, introduction, and thank you to the board, to the faculty, and to the administration for allowing me to be here today, and especially to you, the graduates, and your loved ones for allowing me to be a part of the special celebration. Whenever I stand at the podium, I am reminded that I've always been a very nervous speaker. And in my very early years, I used to practice with my aunts and uncles and other relatives that became victims, and uh, received some of the best speaking advice ever from my father's eldest brother, my Uncle Big Daddy. He said to me, Sugar, if you can be profound, if you can't, be provocative, and if you can't be neither one, be brief. <laughs> so 
I'm sure that some of you came expecting profound, <laughs> and some of you may be seeking provocative. I assure all of you are hoping I'll be brief. <laughs> and, and I will be, because I really only want to get three things done with you today. I want to congratulate you, I want to caution you, and I want to call you to action. So the congratulations are easy, and I'm absolutely privileged to be here with you. You are experiencing this today, a day of achievement and passage, scary and fun. And I hope that you'll close your eyes for just a minute today and realize where you are and how magnificent this all is. I also want to congratulate some people who are not here the founders, the alumni, and supporters of this institution. It was their vision and their sacrifice that has made this possible for you. And you have a great opportunity, not to pay them back, but to build on their legacy by building yours. This is an important time for you, and the opportunities are absolutely there. You all have the opportunity to pull people behind you to show that you can be as strong as they have been in providing a platform for future learning and growth, and you have an opportunity to meet your pledge to serve people around the world. Many of you are beginning, some of you are continuing your lives in the life sciences. And whether you're at the science of science in or the business of science in, or anywhere on that continuum, we welcome you because we need you. Good leadership is never in oversupply. And we need you if we're going to realize the most basic of human desires. And that is to ensure that we have a world of people who are healthy and long lived. You are empowered to deliver just that. And I think you learned here from what I've heard today, both at the podium and at breakfast, that you learned here at KGI that a life in the life sciences is not a simple calling. It is not a casual calling. It is deep and it's real. And the work that we do is too important and too challenging for us to not take it absolutely seriously. We all know, all of us in healthcare, that we can all do better when it comes to bettering health. This is a calling of passion, and I have to say that the passion is palpable on the stage, in the audience, everywhere I've been this morning. It's been inspiring. And many of you, I heard, have come into the health scientists, sciences of late and some of you had early dreams and had visioned in being this life lifelong. That was me. I have wanted to be a doctor since I was six years old. I was inspired by the medical care that was received by my father's, another one of my father's brother. There were 16 altogether of that crew. I know. <laughs> <sighs> but he came to live with us when I was born. He was a paraplegic at the hands of a severe polio infection when he was six years old. I was mesmerized by the medical treatment that he received, from his surgeons to his brace makers. I wanted to do that. And if I wasn't hooked then, I was hooked by our community doctor, Dr. Settles. He served our striving neighborhood with patience and with compassion. He served us with wisdom and commitment. Oh yeah, I really wanted to do that. But even now today, I pause and look back at this. A young black girl in the 1960s raising her hand to say that she wanted to be a physician. It was not a trivial feat. But I had parents that believed I could fly. And they sacrificed and sacrificed to give me wings. And so the third group I want to congratulate today is you, the parents, the grandparents, the significant others and spouses, the children 
the family members, the friends, all of you who have given love and support in every single way imaginable. I want to congratulate you on this day of your great accomplishment and great pride. So I think of my parents all the time, as you might imagine, for all that they've done and all that they continue to do. And I'm forever grateful to them, just as you are to your families. But I also think about them in the context of health and health care. My parents had very different health outcomes. I have a father who is 94. He'll be 95 in a few short months. He can run rings about half the folks in here this very day. He is very much a character. Just a generation or so out of slavery, pulled up out of poverty, a life well lived. He had the opportunity at around his 94th birthday to meet the first black president of the United States. What an amazing experience. What an incredible life for him. My mother died the summer of my freshman year of medical school, struck down at the prime of her life by a stroke. She too was proud. She too had amazing life experiences. She too was focused and determined and sassy, but gone far too soon. Her death nearly derailed my medical career. I couldn't figure out how I was going to manage what, was, what had just happened. I couldn't imagine that I had the strength to pursue. But one of my professors, whose stand was simply this, equanimity under duress, asked me a simple question one day. What would your mother want? What would she do? Before I knew it, there I was, sitting in a cap and gown, just like you are, graduating from medical school, prepped to do what I'd hoped would be important work over the course of my life. So I think of them often. I think about their health consequences. I think of the contrast between them. And it makes me wonder about the healthcare system that we are in. I reflect on the progress that we've made, on the progress that we will make, that we know we're going to make. But I often reflect on the progress that we have not made, those missed opportunities in health care. And in that, I want to give you the caution. The caution is simply this. Do not let the unfinished business of health care remain unfinished in your hands. Simply that. And there are three things I'm hoping that you are able to do. The first, the first is to really pull through to full impact the work that you do. The second is to think big picture, to see it all, and to have grand aspirations. And last but not least is to disrupt our notion of disruptive thinking in healthcare. Let me talk just briefly about those three things. The first, I want to tell you a story about a man that I met. He changed me in a moment. Dr. Abdul Kalam, the former president of India. Woohoo! <laughs> amazing. It was amazing. He told us a story. He said that in the work that he had done in rocketry, he had been asked a question one day by some students. Someone asked him, what has brought you bliss, sir? He said, well, let me tell you about something that brought me happiness. We had trouble getting a rocket off the ground. Lots of thrust, as much as we could get, but failed attempt after failed attempt. The team took another tact. I was so proud. They decided, let's leave thrust aside. Let's tackle the weight of the rocket by developing new lightweight materials. And they won. The rocket took off. He said, I told you, though, that that brought me happiness. Here was my moment of bliss. When approached by an orthopedic surgeon, I was provided with a challenge, he said, that many babies who get new joints don't have the musculature to lift them. Can you do something about that, he was asked. And they worked with that lightweight material 
that had solved his problem in rocketry, and there it was, new, lightweight replacement joints so that babies could run and play and live. That, he said, has brought me bliss. So in that first caution, don't stop at the achievement, at the innovation. Celebrate it, yes, but don't stop. Go for the bliss of the full impact of the work that you do. The second is to make sure that you take the opportunity to move those things along. And we know that stuff's gonna come. I mean, we can do robotic surgery from far away and there are 3D printers standing ready to print new organs. There are people who are paralyzed that are now renewed with regenerated nerves and, mo and motorized exoskeletons. We're going to get there. But here becomes the question. We have the opportunity now, right now, to make more medical progress over the next three decades than we have made in the previous three millennia. I have an aunt who used to always ask me this question. So what you gonna do with that? <laughs> what you gonna do with that? Behind the headlines for biomedical breakthroughs is a much deeper question. How much medical progress do we really need? How much, frankly, can we really can handle? How much can we pay for? We hear this over and over and over again. To many, the answer is obvious, as much as we can get. And ask anybody that's caregiving to a loved one with Alzheimer's or who's dealing with mental illness, who is watching a child suffer with a rare disease, and they will tell you as much as we can get and it isn't coming fast enough. So in a sense, society is already banking on the big medical breakthroughs. We already believe that medical science is gonna pull us back from the precipice that we'll be pushed to by the largest age wave in the history of mankind that's putting us all, or will put us all, right in the crosshairs of Alzheimer's and heart disease and cancer. So we're banking on our ability to make a difference in those spaces. Because the alternative is frankly, just too frightening to contemplate. A system where people continue to suffer and die needlessly against a system that is bankrupt and unable to take care of them. So we know that we're gonna get there and you all will be a part of that solution. We're betting our bodies and our minds on your capabilities. I wanna remind you a little bit about what's at stake here. By 2020, the healthcare costs may consume 25% of the GNP, more than education, national security, environmental protection, and infrastructure repair combined. And that's before the age wave strikes the shore. So don't let your innovation stop, pull them to full impact. The second, See the big picture in the grand scale. How do we know what the real value of the innovation that we work on is? Well, I'm a, I'm a realist. I know that our healthcare system isn't given all that it can give, and we're not getting all of it, all, all out of it that we deserve. There's a lot we can do right now, and you've learned much of that, to bring more value and more efficiency to the system, more health to more people. But we have to take a giant step back, I think, and remember ultimately what your work will bring. That investment in healthcare is going to buy us a world of more brain power and more capacity. It will unleash a wave of global creativity. I challenge all of you to think on that grander scale and to think about the value that you bring against the bigger picture. Because the best of all the value might be simply this. The biggest chance to change the world may come by you giving billions of other people a chance to do the same. And a recent analysis illuminates this in an important way. The ripple effect is profound. Just 10% decrease in the death rates of Americans from heart disease and cancer, those two things alone, would deliver $10 trillion into the national coffers. It's a huge down payment on the national debt, financed by a relatively modest reduction in mortality from two, frankly, preventable categories of disease. So back to my aunt, what you gonna do about that? <laughs> the third caution is don't allow yourself to be trapped in 
silos of what we think disruptive thinking is. Disrupt disruptive thinking in healthcare. Let me explain. Many people think that disruptive thinking comes with technology, your iPhone, that changed the course of, of landlines and home phones and CD cabinets and cameras. But it's not likely that healthcare will be changed with a single silver bullet. It won't be changed overnight or by the next morning by a single finding. It is going to be changed by real disruptive thinking to help us turn a system on its head that thinks it's as exciting to do things that we used to think were mundane, like deliver to people the value of what we already have. So much is left on the table. Let me share this brief caution. Consider that half of all adults age 50 will have chronic diseases. What if we thought in terms of prevention and wellness? What if we decided to take some of the halfway progress that we have in the treatment and management of chronic diseases and the prevention of those things and actually put our shoulder into it? Because here's some examples of the halfway mark. 60 years after the first approved medicines for hypertension, high blood pressure remains an epidemic and arguably to some, a neglected disease. 50 years after the Surgeon General linked smoking to cancer, cigarettes continue to kill a half million people a year. 40 years after the first statin was isolated, 60% of Americans with high cholesterol don't have it controlled. 30 years since HIV was first characterized, 330,000 people a year who are infected. 20 years after the advent of highly effective antipsychotics, so many people remain untreated. And more than 10 years since the development of the Millennium Development Goals, we haven't made but baby steps in trying to reduce the horrible maternal mortality that plagues us around the world. I heard a statistic the other day that gave me chills. Disruptive thinking, I thought after I heard this line. One million children a year die on the day of their birth. One million children die a year on the day of their birth. What if disruptive thinking is doing the simple things we know could get them to day two? The cautions. So what are you going to do about that? Here's the call to action. Bring disruptive thinking to each and every dimension of healthcare, not only to biomedical breakthroughs, but also to the less obvious areas of opportunity and need, prevention, wellness, nutrition, early diagnosis, healthcare access, health-related insurance and finance, and certainly public health. All of these are beckoning to you. We've got a lot to do. We need to uproot and streamline a linear industrial drug development process that takes a full generation in many cases. We need to change that process to one that is collaborative and circular and one that cherishes ideas from all sources. We need to get much more serious about healthcare disparities. We have to end the day that your zip code can determine your health outcome. We need a healthcare finance system that's as advanced as the breakthroughs it's designed to encourage. We need new thinking on risk versus benefit, cost versus value, rare versus diseases. We need to disrupt each and every part of it. And that will take you and your collaborative action. What struck me this morning was that you all work together, that KGI was inherently an organization that was a bridge builder, a silo destroyer. It gave you access and ability to think about each other, to know each other, and to look forward to work to each other, with each other, to bring these things down. You have all grown up with global connectivity. You're comfortable working across boundaries. You've seen the power of disruptive thinking and have heard an admonition about disrupting disruptive thinking. You're all ready to lead and to collaborate. That's the kind of thinking you have to bring, and I think it is attainable and just in front of you. So, 
If you think about today, I'll say this last bit to you. Your legacy starts today. That word, legacy, was one that my parents spoke to me when I was first a teenager, at least the first they spoke it, and I really understood what they meant. I was obsessed once they told me that I should build one and asked what it would look like, and they told me simply this, your legacy will be measured by three things, what you leave behind, who you bring behind, and what you've learned along the way. So as we move to this inflection point, let me ask that you seek to leave these things behind. A healthcare system that offers hope, dignity, and access to billions and billions more of people around the world. You can bring behind a new generation of life sciences innovators, just as yourselves focused on disruptive thinking and transformational change. And along the way, you'll learn that your biggest contribution to the world will be giving more opportunity to people to change it. It's a noble challenge, and it's one that I hope becomes not your life's job, but your life's work. Roll up your sleeves, lean into it. We are all depending on you. Do not let us down. Thank you, and congratulations to you all. Frida, on behalf of all of us, thank you so much, and I hope you can tell your aunt that we are going to try to do something with it. Thank you. I'm text her when I'm <laughs> thank you. Uh, it is now my honor to introduce, introduce the chair of our board of trustees, who I believe has some resolutions. It's now time to uh, move forward to uh, one feature of today's activity that you all have been greatly looking forward to. We, yes, we will uh, progress through each of the uh, various uh, groups uh, in terms of diplomas and certificates. And I'll start. Recently, the Board of Trustees received a resolution from the faculty to award certificates to members of Keck Graduate Institute's Bioscience Management Certificate Program. The Board approved the resolution unanimously and I call upon Jim Sterling, the Dean of Faculty, to present the candidates. Will the candidates for the Bioscience Management Certificate in Applied Life Sciences please rise? Mr. Chairman, with great pleasure, I present the candidates who have successfully completed the requirements for the Bioscience Management Certificate in Applied Life Sciences. Upon the recommendation of the faculty, with the Board of Trustees of Keck Graduate Institute concurring, I hereby award you the Bioscience Management Certificate in Applied Life Sciences with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Sergei Nechayev. Lanessa Hong Nguyen. Let's congratulate the recipients of the BMC. Recently, the Board of Trustees received a resolution from the faculty to award certificates to members of Keck Graduate Institute's post-baccalaureate pre-medical certificate program. The Board approved the resolution, resolution unanimously, and I call upon Jim Sterling, the Dean of Faculty, to present the candidates. 
Will the candidates for the post-baccalaureate pre-medical certificate in applied life sciences please rise? Mr. Chairman, with great pleasure, I present the candidates who have successfully completed the requirements for the post-baccalaureate pre-medical certificate in applied life sciences. Upon the recommendation of the faculty, with the Board of Trustees of Keck Graduate Institute concurring, I hereby award you the post-baccalaureate pre-medical certificate in applied life sciences with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Irene E. Aborientos, in absentia. Manita Cham, in absentia. Eric Yunquan Choi. Carlos Armando Damas, in absentia. Cameron Daniel Fury, in absentia. Nancy Gallardo Flores, in absentia. Her GC Lucy. Claire Jang, in absentia. Michelle Elizabeth Kreit. Erica Chung Liu. Garrett Louie. John Paul Michaud, in absentia. Robin Hasmuk Modi. Samantha Barbosa Norona. Charlton Darren Ong. Francis Catherine Pillsbury. <laughs> Vanessa Elizabeth Ramirez, in absentia. Sean Binbar Sheehy, in absentia. Varant Norar Shirvanian, in absentia. Let's give a big round of applause to the PPC recipients. Recently, the Board of Trustees received a resolution from the faculty to grant degrees to member of Keck Graduate Institute candidate for the Doctor of Philosophy in Computational and Systems Biology. The Board approved the resolution unanimously. I call upon Jim Sterling, the Dean of Faculty, to present the candidates. Will the candidates for Doctor of Philosophy in Computational and Systems Biology, please rise. Mr. Chairman, with great pleasure, I present the candidates who have successfully completed the requirements for the Doctor of Philosophy in Computational and Systems Biology. <laughs> Jesse Peter Frumpkin. Jifeng Qian, in absentia. Let's congratulate Peter and, and Jifeng.
Recently, the Board of Trustees received a resolution from the faculty to grant degrees to members of Keck's Graduate Institute's candidate for the Doctor of Philosophy in Applied Life Sciences. The Board approved the resolution unanimously. I now call upon Jim Sterling, the Dean of Faculty, to present the candidates. Will the candidates for Doctor of Philosophy in Applied Life Sciences please rise? Mr. Chairman, with great pleasure, I present the candidates who have successfully completed the requirements for the Doctor of Philosophy in Applied Life Sciences. Upon the recommendation of the faculty, with the Board of Trustees of Keck Graduate Institute concurring, I hereby confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Applied Life Sciences with all the rights privileges and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Christopher Michael Warner, in absentia. Christina Lynn Ruskus. Peter Edward Bandeventer in absentia. Let's congratulate Chris, Christina, and Peter. Recently, the Board of Trustees received a resolution from the faculty to grant degrees to members of Keck Graduate Institute's postdoctoral professional masters in bioscience management class. The board approved the resolution unanimously, and I call upon Jim Sterling, the dean of faculty, to present the candidates. Will the candidates for the degree of postdoctoral professional masters in bioscience management please rise? Mr. Chairman, with great pleasure, I present the students who have successfully completed the requirements for the degree of postdoctoral professional master's degree in bioscience management. Upon the recommendation of the faculty, with the Board of Trustees of Keck Graduate Institute concurring, I hereby confer the degree of postdoctoral professional master's in bioscience management with all the rights privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Eric Allen Houghton in absentia. Tui Tu Trong. Joanna Asper. <laughs> Zainab Ibrahim Bello. Billy T. Chen. <laughs> Harita Haridas. Young Chun Su in absentia. Snehal V. J. D.
Megana S. Joshi. Supriya Vijay Kumar Kadam. Sheldon Robert Mink. Syed Hadi Mermalek Sani. Du Chao Ni. Krishna Ramaswamy. Dipali Narendra Shinda. Rajesh Belagapudi in absentia. David James Winterheimer. <laughs> Kiera Denise Wright. Let's give a big round of applause for all of the PPM graduates. Recently, the Board of Trustees received a resolution from the faculty to grant degrees to members of Keck Graduate Institute's 11th Master of Science class, the class of 2013. The Board approved the resolution unanimously. I call upon Jim Sterling, the Dean of Faculty, to present the candidates. Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Science please rise? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, with great pleasure, I present the candidates who have successfully completed the requirements for the degree of Master of Science. Upon the recommendation of the faculty, with the Board of Trustees of Keck Graduate Institute concurring, I hereby confer on you the degree of Master of Science with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Kate Elizabeth Brown. Stacy Marie Crawford. <laughs> Michael Lamar Garrett Davis. Andrew Charles DiGiorgio. Yeah. 
Dennis Batarina Duong. Robert Paul Cratley, Jr. <laughs> Robert Lee. Amanda Walker. Yeah. Jesse Yang, in absentia. Sally Yang. Let's congratulate the Master of Science class of 2013. Recently, the Board of Trustees received a resolution from the faculty to grant degrees to members of Keck Graduate Institute's 11th or 12th Master of Biosciences class, class of 2013, the board approved the resolution unanimously. I call upon Jim Sterling, the Dean of Faculty, to present the candidates. Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Bioscience please rise? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, with great pleasure I present the candidates who have successfully completed the requirements for the degree of Master of Bioscience. Upon the recommendation of the faculty, with the Board of Trustees of Keck Graduate Institute concurring, I hereby confer on you the degree of Master of Bioscience with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. If Michael Amadi. <laughs> Felicia Ogechi Amaechi. Juan Jose Aponte Ubillos. <laughs> Anofre H. Bacani the second. Sazen Bali. Eileen Bao. Jacob William Boland. <laughs> B. 
Benjamin Charles Brom. Ian Hunter Brown. <laughs> Kenzie Busick. Christopher Cantrell. Yeah. Richard Ipin Chen. Kevin Nathaniel Cho. Yeah. Jessica Caron Jessica Costales. Riva Elaine Culper. <laughs> Karishma Dogger. Robert Charles Davies. Yeah. Sean Michael Delfoss. Ram Kumar Doriaj. Pratishta Duhan. <laughs> Christian Matias Gallardo. Kelly Gross. Patrick McConica Harkins. Nathan Shi Yao Shu Andrew T. Jerome.
Stefan Kim. Ujval Kondra Gunta. <laughs> Jui Hamant Katwal. Jennifer J. Lee. <laughs> William Leonardi. Adrian Kwong Chi Lee. Ankit Sanjay Loda. Brady James Miller. Mark Alexander Nurek. Giselle Stephanie Perez. Chintan Rajendra Ramaya. Stephanie Kazumi Sakamoto. <laughs> Melissa Satavipat. Punkit Pippin Shah. <laughs> Porus Shrenik Shah. Surgeon Shailish Shah. <laughs> Shrina Shah. Chakti Sayasalit. <laughs> H. 
Hamel Somaya. Huang Lan Kong Tron. Brett Matthew Vincent. Andrew Vo. Jeffrey Furlong Welch. Aaron Michelle White. Samet Yildirim. Let's congratulate the cla MBS class of 2013. I guess the uh, board had a lot of resolutions recently. Congratulations. <laughs> Let me again, uh, after this, uh, welcome all of you as the, the new alumni of the Cat Graduate Institute. Welcome. As is our custom, uh, we uh, introduce one uh, leader of the alumni uh, to speak to the new alumni and the, and the families. And this year, it's a pleasure to introduce Ryan Peeler of the class of 2007. Uh, Ryan was a 2007 MBS graduate who is speaking today on behalf of the KGI Alumni Association. Ryan was able to parlay his internship experience into employment as he has been employed at Lynx Research as a project manager since graduation. Ryan was recently laid, main, named by or, <laughs> dangerous crowd here. Dangerous crowd. Ryan was recently named by the Orange County Metro as one of their 40 entrepreneurs under 40 to keep an eye on. I have to think about that. Ryan is an excellent example of how to be an active alumnus who not only volunteers his time but supports the advancement of the institution. Since Ryan's graduation from student to alumnus, he has been an active participant in the student mentoring program and industry spotlight days. Ryan has attended many net alumni network networking events and focus group discussions. Most recently, Ryan was one of five alumni who came to campus as part of an alumni panel discussion with all of you students. Ryan keeps in touch with most of his class and has strong ties from alumni from all of the classes. Thank you, Ryan, for your gift of time and support of KGI, and we appreciate your being KGI's alumnus speaker at this commencement. Ryan. As these class sizes get bigger, I can be the first to say good afternoon, graduates, since it normally doesn't go that long. 
so good afternoon, graduates, and uh, you did it. I couldn't be happier uh, to be standing here before you today with your friends and family to also say good job. Uh, a quick aside before we get going. Uh, now is when you have the permission to look back and say it wasn't that bad, uh, but not before. And uh, I, we're in the home stretch here, so I will focus on being brief. Uh, so on behalf of all my colleagues in the Alumni Association, I say welcome. The alumni board that I represent was founded a little over four years ago uh, with the purpose of being the liaison between KGI and the alumni community. The hope was that we could give back to KGI by helping in four key areas, admissions, curriculum, networking, and career services. As an alumni board, we hope our time and effort has given you a better experience in at least one of these areas while you're a student here. We also coordinate the efforts for alumni giving to the annual fund. You can be sure you'll hear more about that later and throughout your career. <clears throat> so, what is the KGI Alumni Association? You're joining a group of hundreds of KGI students, or sorry, graduates, working all around the world at companies from Abbott to Zymogenics. The KGI Alumni Association has no membership fees, and today you've done the only thing you need to do to join. You graduated. <clears throat> So now that you're a member of this exclusive group, what exactly does this mean? It means access, and it means you have a way to give back. You have access to resources like people who have been on the same path as you. You have access to advice, mentorship, a network of job opportunities, and hiring managers who have real world proof of what these degrees you're getting today are worth. A few years from now, you'll have access to people like you are today, people who are knowledgeable and passionate and maybe even well rested after finals and TMP presentations, who could use a little advice or a little help finding their way. So be a good citizen on both sides of this fence we call experience. I implore you to be an active participant in the alumni community. Give money if you can, but always be ready to help or be helped by someone who walked these halls with you or before you or after you. Your education was a crash course in our industry. Take a second to think back about what you knew 18 months ago and what you know now. If your experience was like mine, everything came at you so fast that you don't realize how much you absorbed. You'll build on that throughout your career. And when you share those things, the things that you're learning, you benefit and so does, everything, uh, so does everyone else. It won't be long before there are thousands of KGI graduates helping to shape the future of human health. This is a tremendous opportunity to get to know people with a similar mission to yours so take it and run with it. Go make those connections. Go out of your way to introduce people who might, not, or who might be able to help each other, even if you don't see the benefit to yourself right now. Because I can assure you, the benefit is just around the corner. The applied life sciences are far reaching, and the world we work in is small and getting smaller. I wanted to conclude by telling you all that there are envelopes taped to the bottom of each of your chairs that contain a check we call this seed money, to get you started. I really wanted to conclude that way, but to be honest, <clears throat> the valuable thing isn't taped to your chair at all. The thing of real value is sitting in your chair. Thanks for choosing KGI, thanks for finishing, and thanks in advance for all the great things you're gonna do for our community and for our world. I hope your celebrations are worthy of this achievement and it's my honor to congratulate you all again and welcome you to the Alumni Network. <laughs> do, do people up here have something under the envelope? Is it, is, is it just, just... <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. Um, I would like to have the final formal piece of this ceremony uh, be joined in by everyone, and that is to uh, applaud while our new alumni move their tassels from the right to the left as graduates. Congratulations from all of us to all of you. I would like to 
begin by saying that fairly recently, uh, Keck Graduate Institute was approached by a community development staff of a, of a community in the Inland Empire and wanted us to move our campus to their downtown. Uh, they offered uh, free space and lots of parking and access to Interstates 10 and 15. So it kind of gives you a clue, but I won't tell you where it is. Anyway, just, just now we are in Claremont. We have absolutely no intention of ever leaving. But I was struck by one special attraction they noted. Centrally located between LA and San Diego. Now, I lived for many years in Lincoln, Nebraska. And so I'm particularly sensitive, <laughs> particularly sensitive to being centrally located. We would boast all the time that we were a midway between your favorite California beach and the most exciting shows on Broadway. And technically that was true. Um, but for the record, we are always going to be in Claremont and we have all the access to I-10, LA and San Diego that we need. But I was particularly struck by the inadequate metaphor and the irony. Centrally located. Every place on the planet is centrally located to somewhere. <laughs> the reason I find it ironic is that we are also centrally located, if you will, between the past and the future. You are sitting here as the bridge between our past and our future. And KGI has helped define your future as well. But I would like to argue briefly today, centrally located is an appropriate metaphor in this case. You are in a unique and most critical junction in our past and future and your past and future. Graduation or commencement is a very special bond. You are about to begin a new era, either professionally or educationally in your lives, by having completed the curriculum and co-curriculum we have developed and delivered. We as an institution have grown and expanded our programs and expertise. And likewise, we are about to enter new arenas, both professionally and educationally. You have a relatively brief history and are about to join the ranks of over 500 accomplished alumni who share your passion and commitment to the life sciences, and you are developing skills to exploit them to help society. We, as a growing professional education and research organization, are entering new ranks among professional science programs and health professions. Of course, with our unique perspective of the synergy of business and science. And of course, our parallels can go on. What is most important, however, is the bond that keeps us together at the nexus of past and present. I hope it is our shared passion and commitment and then it is our entrepreneurial drive and our community values that you gave us to remember of continual learning, growing, and contributing in the most effective ways possible. I hope it's our shared hunger to question and challenge accepted boundaries of thought or promise. The past and the future come together in very tangible ways as well. Jim Sterling, our Vice President of Academic Affairs and Dean of the School of Applied Life Sciences, and Kyle Mack, an alum who I see over there, uh, graduate, who graduated from the MBS program last year, were interviewed in a story for last year's U.S. News and World Report's Best Graduate Schools. Using KGI and the MBS program as an example, the story talked about how financially savvy students want their graduate programs to help them tailor their skills and provide a direct link to specific employers and sectors. The bridge between your past, our connections, and our futures come together. Member of our Board of Trustees, Ross Grossman, recently retired from Regeneron, eloquently noted at our fellowship dinner that one of the reasons he supports KGI is because we are the, one of the few academic organizations that really listens to industry and the healthcare world and provides relevant, timely, and realistic experiences for our students in all of our programs. Our faculty, who represent a rather impressive record of experience in both academic pursuits and industry, work to bridge your future to their expertise and success. While having 12 graduating classes is not a long history by academic standards, we are beginning to see the seeds of our bright future. Successes like Ryan, our alumni speaker today, who has actually co-founded a company within his organization using proprietary data research that can map entire scientific communities for biotech and pharmaceutical companies. Achievements like competitive, the Competitive Intelligence Department at Amgen is made up virtually of KGI alums. Accomplishments like a record number of our PPC graduates already in medical school across the country, 
like Sarah Sotella, who recently who received her PPC last year and is about to start medical school at the University of Cincinnati. <laughs> Successes like Linda Suhu, a graduate of our inaugural PPM cohort, who is now at Gilead Sciences as a manager of technical services and CMC regulation. And we go back to our pioneer MBS class of 2002, we can celebrate the successes of Lean Martinsons, who is director of global business at Kyogen, or Gene Doble, who is a director at Amgen. And success that is returning to KGI in new ways, like our alumni who are now at a point in their careers where they themselves are acting as corporate liaisons to our team master's projects. What I ask of you today as a class of 2013 is not to think of today as an ending, but to recognize the meaning of commencement and continue building the bridge between our future and yours. I ask that you enter our alumni ranks, get involved to help not only the future generations of KGI students, but also to develop your own vibrant and effective professional networks. We at KGI promise to be here for you. We hope to be a beacon of entrepreneurial spirit and to represent the highest ethical and professional standards. We promise to continue with passion to benefit society through research and education. Through the, at the interface of science and business. We also promise to be here for you in your, in your ups and downs, because together we will have ups and downs as well, because being entrepreneurial and innovative is defined by traveling new paths where the future is unknowable, but likely to be perilous. But as you succeed, so do we. As we grow in prestige and international awareness, you will see enhanced value in your credentials and experience as well. Our past and our futures are linked, and I am very proud that it is so. To quote Dr. Lewis Hall this afternoon, your legacy starts today. So I ask you, as a class of 2013, to share in our pride and share in our thrill at your accomplishments and your future. I ask you to consider what we can do as we work together for that shared future, because knowing you and the people in KGI I am certain we can do great things together. Now, as we begin our futures together, I ask all of you to join me in one last round of applause to congratulate the class of 2013.